Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, I'm just going to be kind of uh, going through and showing you what I've done and what's going to be expected here in the next couple of days. Uh, right now, I'm working on the saucer. Uh, I realized uh, that uh, there was a mistake that was made in here, and I'm having to correct it. And unfortunately, I had to kind of cut a hole into my uh, lower saucer section here to uh, access the impulse crystal, uh, which was wired wrong. What I had done when I originally wired it from my last build. Uh, what I had done is uh, the all the LEDs required resistors for the uh, other board that I used from uh, Trek Modeler. Well, I'm using uh, Tenet Control's board, and his board has a resistor built into it. So what I'm going to be doing is I had to come in here on the impulse crystal of the um, impulse drive lights. Uh, I had to come in here and remove the uh, the back cover and take it apart and uh, pull the amber LEDs out and I don't have any more amber LEDs so I'm going to be using red uh, and the reason being that is because when I hooked it up to the power uh, to demo the the uh, uh, demo to make sure everything was working right on the on the board and the switch and whatnot all the rest of the impulse, the impulse crystal on the bottom lit up real nice. The it went from blue to orange or amber, and then the uh, I wired in the the uh, I wired in the uh, deflector disc uh, LED, and it works fine on the board. So what I had to do uh, is take the resistors off. But re the reason being is because everything else was real bright and, and uh, standing up real nice but these impulse uh, drive lights were very very dim and I realized that I had a 470 ohm resistor on each one of them and it dimmed it down now when I plugged it directly into power from my power source they were real nice and bright so that tells me that the resistors are it's double resisting uh, having some here on the on the LEDs and then the resistor on the board so I had to go in and fix that I finally got all my wires uh, hooked up and ready you know uh, separated and ready to go uh, I got my uh, board and if you remember uh, on one of the earlier videos I had my board down inside the uh, the upper saucer and I realized that uh, going into this there was a lot more wires than I realized so and it was going to be a little difficult to run all the wires down and and down through the the neck and down through the bottom of the um, uh, deflector housing so what I did is I took the board out and I painted up my base and I still got to put the decals and do some touch-up painting on it uh, and what I'd done is I put my drilled my holes for my power supply and then my switch but for some reason this switch is reversed and I, I I've been trying to fiddle around with it trying to figure out how to get it to where uh, it's supposed to go but uh, for now uh, this, I'm gonna leave it the way it is because it works and then here's my switch one and switch two that changes the changes the demo demo mode and everything else and I'm gonna mount my board right here in the bottom uh, that way uh, if something happens uh, that the board goes out or what I don't have to break into the model I can just flip the the base over and uh, work on it from there I'm also going to get another board for the torpedo launcher um, I'm going to order that soon and uh, get that get that in and get it installed I'm going to go ahead and wire into the neck I'm going to go ahead and wire the, the the lights and run the wires down through to where when they come in uh, the board comes in. All I got to do is mount the speaker on one side and then the the uh, the board on the other. And uh, also, what I've done is I've figured out a way to, to put lights on the base because uh, you know when in dry dock they have those those lights that look like schematics. Uh, they're they're lit up. So what I'm going to do is um, put the schematics. And what I did is I uh, put tape on these to where they're going to. Uh, it's just the the plastic and I primed it and painted it and I'm going to be using 
uh, some, uh, I don't know what color yet I'm going to use for the, the ribbing here on this, but uh, once I do, I've got uh, some LED light strips on mounted on some uh, balsa wood, and I'm going to put those in there, and I've already tested it, and it looks real good lit up, so uh, I'm going to be excited about that. Uh, kind of to show you, uh, last time you saw me, I had the, I had the, um, the, uh, I was working on the secondary hull. Well, I've gotten, gotten it together, and I've gotten it wired, uh, got all the, got all the, uh, LEDs in, got it, uh, glued together, uh, I've got it puttied up on these seams, and, uh, I'm gonna zoom in, and let me get you into the frame here. I'm going to zoom in a little more. And right here, uh, if you remember a while back, I was talking about some of these gaps. Uh, you're going to have some real bad gaps because this model is notorious for that. Uh, if you trim those those tabs down inside that hold the pylons on, if you trim those down just quite a bit to where there's almost, they've almost taken off, these uh, pylons will fit down in here real nice. And as you can see, there's just a little bit of a gap right there that can be fixed with putty. And the same thing on the back side, uh, right here, uh, it can be fixed with putty. So uh, I'm letting that dry. Uh, got all my wires in for my, uh, got all my, in for the, uh, the nacelles, the power, the chiller grills, the flood lamps, the RCS thrusters. I've got those wired in on both sides, ready to go. Um, I've got to condense. Once I get the neck on, I can start running, and I get the uh, saucer put on, I can start running my wires down through and getting all these uh, connected. And uh, I've also put in the uh, art, the uh, landing bay sequential lights. There, uh, they work and they're uh, runs real good. Um, I've got a light block. I've got to put some putty down in here and light block it, and then I'm going to probably repaint these areas right here once I get it once I get it fixed so looking good here uh, I'm gonna be doing some puttying and uh, uh, I've already painted most of the secondary hull uh, on this uh, so what I'm gonna be doing is when I get ready to paint the uh, neck and the pylons I'm gonna be putting some masking tape there's a line right here it goes all the way across down the middle of the secondary hole uh, on the uh, port side of the uh, secondary hole. I'm going to be putting a row of masking tape, painter's tape, right there along that line. So that way, uh, when I do paint, I won't get uh, overspray on any of the rest and uh, um, affect the uh, Arboretum windows uh, and anything else on the bottom. Uh, so. Uh, and I might just go ahead and put the paint here, the uh, tape here, uh, and just kind of re repaint all that uh, for that. And uh, it's going to go well. Uh, I'm getting excited for it. Um, I've, I'm working on the right now. I'm working on the um, the um, housing for the deflector dish. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is, if you notice in the movies. Uh, Right about here, there is a uh, spotlight, so what a, a light that shines up over that that insignia uh, circle or, or whatnot there. So I'm gonna what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be I'm gonna sand off a little bit back here to kind of get rid of some of the paint, and then I'm gonna mount a five millimeter uh, white LED in there. And once that deflector dish gets put on and it whatnot and lit up, it'll show through just like it does on the movie. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the the uh, in the cells where the registration number goes in the back so uh, that's moving along there but now let's get back over to the the saucer section and uh, what I'm doing is uh, I've taken these uh, red five millimeter LEDs and I've wired them together you don't need a resistor if you're using the NVE board from Tina controls because it already has a resistor built into it and what I'm going to be doing is um, I've already wired in the negative uh, I mean I'm sorry the positive and to uh, wire those together and then I've got to uh, let me get you back in the shot here I didn't realize I was out of shot 
um, right here is where I had to drill the hole for the uh, the to to fix it. Let me resituate here and zoom back in. There you go. Right here is where the deflector crystal, the impulse crystal, is sitting. So uh, right in here, let me get my pointer here. Right here is the amber side of the uh, impulse the uh, deflect the impulse crystal so what I'm going to have to do is run the red wire here run it back up through and um, there's already a wire sticking out here which is for the, the amber that's already so all I got to do is put the wire side of the wire on right here uh, and hopefully uh, and hopefully it'll get it stick because it's kind of a small area and then uh, I'm going to be fixing to solder on the green uh, uh, LEDs for the uh, to go into the uh, terminal number two which is the negative uh, for the positive side of the res of the uh, LED so uh, that's being wired so let me get my helping hands here and uh, sometimes you can make you know if you make a mistake don't panic uh, it's fixable um, like I did I've had to make you know I've had to fix a couple fix a couple things and it was an easy fix you just gotta slow down and and think about things before you just start tearing stuff apart because these model kits are not not cheap so uh, what I'm gonna do now is get my one of my LEDs, put it in my helping hands here. And I'm gonna get another piece of uh, green wire. I thought I had one. I was messing around. I must have knocked it. There it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wire uh, on this. Uh, On my help uh, while this is sitting in here uh, let me tighten up here make sure you're in the shot what I'm gonna do is take two pieces of uh, green magnet wire solder them on and then I'm gonna take one and jump it over uh, to the other LED that way we don't have four wires coming together you just have uh, two coming off the the uh, LEDs. Uh, probably what I'm going to do before I, I think about this, uh, before I, but I think about this before I do, I probably need to get a longer piece of uh, wire because it's going to be running a, quite a long way out of the out of the dish. So I'm just going to go ahead and get a new piece real quick and get about a think about. A, 12 inch piece or so. And then I'm gonna take my my Dremel. And clean those wires off. Get that enameling off. Uh, like I said before in some of the past videos, you can take your soldering iron and tin. Uh, Tend the wire just depending on how good your soldering iron is. Sometimes uh, it, yeah, I can get it to stick, sometimes I can't. And also, uh, if you can't get your solder to stick real well, I know it's kind of a mess, but um, you can use C flux. Uh, I don't recommend it, it's a make, it makes a mess and it clogs up your soldering iron, but it does work. It, it will allow the, the uh, solder to stick a whole lot better. So let me twist those together and make sure my, my wires go in the right place. All right, so I'm going to put these on the other side. And I've noticed it's going to be a lot easier for me to solder this on if I solder put some solder on this wire first because it makes it stick a whole lot lot easier. Okay. 
And two, there's also some on the soldering iron. And that should be it. Just let it dry. Clean off my tip end of my soldering iron. Alright, that should take care of that. Now, what I'm going to do is take this, saw, this wire and I'm going to flip over the LEDs. And uh, what I'm going to do but before I do I'm going to take some shrink tubing it's a good idea to do this on some of these joints uh, that way um, the shrink tubing will help the, the wire stay down stay in place so that way if it if the LEDs move it won't it won't uh, allow it to break free so I'm just going to take my and just kind of run across there and let it let it melt back out a little bit so you can get it better all right now that that's on and you don't need a whole lot so actually just want to make sure you get enough and I'll clean this off and when you clean this wire off you don't need but maybe a half inch uh, you don't need to go back very very far because you take the risk of if the wire touches uh, another wire accidentally while it's hooked up it can cause a short and you have some problems alright that now touch this a little hot get some solder on there and two, what I've done is I've made me a, a third helping hand here. Uh, put just a little one of these clamps on a uh, alligator clamps on a wooden dowel because uh, it helps when you're having to solder up real close on something. This this uh, magnet wire has a tendency to get real hot. So uh, what I do is I'll put that wire, clamp it in there, and that way I can I can move it where I need to be without get burning my hands. that there for a second and we should be good to go check that and see I'm gonna have to fix that because that's barely sticking on I don't want that to fall off or break loose Check that and see how that worked. Ah, that's a better connection. Now comes the hard part where we uh, try to put this down inside the saucer. Uh, also, what I'm going to be doing is taking a little bit of CA glue. I've gotten some. Uh, uh, Tweezers here. 
I've taken some pieces of strip styrene and glued them together. And so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to re-glue these. I had to break this free because it was not allowing the LEDs. I'm going to put this back down inside there. Get some, get some of my uh, CA glue here and put quite a bit on the bottom here. Good thing about this is, is I've already got the CA glue on here. It's already ready to stick back down on there. Put that back down in there. Hopefully I can get it set before. And what I'll do is take a little bit of my Insta set or uh, if you can find it, Zip Kicker. You spray some of this stuff down in there and then what that does is it bonds that CA glue instantly to where it won't move. And what I'll do is I'll test it. Alright, we're good to go there. So, now, here comes the hard part. This one, I, all I'm going to have to do is just run it up through, run it up through the, uh, the, uh, main hole. Let me scoot my scoot this over to where you're in the shot. I didn't realize you're out of the shot. So what I'm about to do is I'm gonna run this green wire up through back out of here. Uh, hopefully I can get it do is I'm going to curve that end. And uh, I did have to leave the wires that were there that previously I, I soldered in simply for the fact that uh, I couldn't get them out because I had uh, uh, glued them down to the saucer. It's like threading a needle. You just got to be patient. hard part is getting the red wire in here and glued. Now, I, I know you're wondering why I'm doing this instead of uh, running all the wires through the main hole. Well, because of the fact that, that green goes to the top and all I got to do is just sort of this this red wire uh, down to the amber oh that's why it went around so I need to go through the middle there we go that's why it wasn't allowing me to pull it in This might take a little bit of work. I 
Yeah, we've about got those into place. Like I said, the hardest part is getting them, getting them in there, getting it situated. Oops, got them in there too far. All right, now we've got our wires, our LEDs, just about where we need them to be. Uh, just a little bit of CA glue and some manipulating. Uh, now what I'm going to be doing here is uh, what I better do is take a little bit of black tape because I didn't put magnet uh, a piece of uh, Solder, uh, shrink tubing. I'm just going to wrap it around. A couple of times. Just to make sure we don't get a connection. And now they can cause a short. And you want them, and you want them kind of close to the, kind of close to the center, because uh, if you notice in the movies, there, um, you can try to get it to where it's um, further apart. But uh, if you look at a lot of the models uh, out there, the uh, LEDs are the lights are toward a little more toward the center. Um, that way when you put this back on uh, they're more or less they're more or less sitting about here on either side that way um, it looks a little bit more like the the uh, but I might what I might do is kind of spread them out a little bit more make sure my towels down because I don't want to scratch and you don't have to you don't have to glue them down. Uh, they'll be perfectly fine the way they are. But I'm going to take a little bit of my CA glue, and tack them down. That way they don't move. Same thing with the other one. Kind of bend it up to where they're Place. Spray a little of the zip paper down in there, and you should be able to. And you should be able to bend it. There we go. Now they're in place. 
All right, now, the hard part is to come. Now, what I got to do is move this, move this wire over. Tell you what, this magnet wire still here is good stuff, but when it catches, it catches. And now, stuff that down in somewhere. Alright. Now I believe I've got enough. All I gotta do get my pliers here to where I can grab a hold of without hurting my hand from sanding this down. Hopefully I can get a good solid connection there without burning, without burning anything. Paint off my tip. What I'm gonna do is hopefully touch this wire down in here and get some solder on it. Now you can't see what I see, but uh, some of that solder rubbed off onto the onto another post, and you don't want that to happen. You don't want it crossing hairs here. Looks like that took. I said I can't get this little bit of wire away from. There we go. Now, if you'll bear with me for just a few minutes, I know this is kind of boring for some of you, but all I'm going to do is hook this up to my power source. And this is the uh, number two goes into terminal number two on the board. So hook this up into number two. Consult my consult my diagram. You can see it's it's pretty self. Uh, I don't know if you can. I'll hold it up here a little bit, but you can get a good get a good picture. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, pretty straightforward. I had a little bit of confusion with the the uh, impulse the impulse crystal and all that kind of stuff. So um, now that it's all I've got it all done, all I got to do is connect it all together and uh, test it out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get my impulse crystal from my deflector dish and wire that one in. Alright, now we need blue. I may not do that because that's quite a bit of 
so blue. That I can't see very good tonight. Blue goes into terminal four. Find my screwdriver here. There we go. Hold off. <clears throat> And the amber will go into terminal five, I believe. That's terminal five. So the amber will go into terminal five. And some of these wires are kind of short. But once I get it all together. And then we have the red wire that goes to the center pin goes into terminal 13. Alright, that's all I've already done. Let me get my power supply plugged up here. Uh, I found this power supply at uh, Best Buy. It's only like $17, $18. And it has a variety of uh, variety of the um, settings. Let me bring it in here. If I don't know if you can see it or not very well, but there's a 12 volt setting and a nine nine volt setting. And some of these uh, boards run off of a 12 volt. Some of them run off of a nine volt. Alright, now, we should be connected to where I can turn this on, and there it goes, let's see the, the, uh, turn this off, you can see the, let me, you can see the amber turn in there, and you can see the red, the, uh, red lights on, and here in a second, the, light will change to blue there goes this ramping ramping on goes to blue and the red LEDs went off so now here in a minute this is going to ramp off and of course the, it'll all look better when you see the deflector dish and and uh, get you know it all it's all together and the the warp nacelles and stuff that all come on it's going to look it's going to look real nice so uh, this is it's fixing to power back down again, and there you have it. So uh, that's going to be a wrap for this video, folks. What I'm going to do now is work on putting uh, work on putting uh, the uh, housing back together for the uh, impulse drive engines and. Uh, also, I'm going to be um, uh, putting the RCS thrusters in. I've got the RCS thruster ports ready to go for the deflector dish and whatnot. So it's going to be, it's going to look good. So uh, next time you see me, I should have the saucer painted. I should have the secondary hole. Oh, excuse me, have the secondary hole uh, finished, uh, puttied, and wired, wired in together you know everything kind of condensed down and get ready for uh, the next step which will be getting the neck on and uh, puttying it I've got a couple of the paragraphic sets to put on the uh, torpedo bay area and uh, get that ready to prime and putty and then um, start working on the painting and hopefully we should be able to start working on the Aztec painting soon so uh, that's what's coming up and this is uh this will be part seven that i'm doing now uh i forgot to mention that at the beginning of the video so anyway uh that's it for this video everybody and have a good day